guys it's Lisa thank you for coming back to my channel today it's Saturday and we're going to do a art journal page I have been just dying to do one I haven't done one in in kind of a while it feels and I haven't done anything in this Groombacher in and out art journal book so today's the day I thought I'd give you a quick flip through I have some pages left and I do have some sun peeking through in my art studio, so I'm excited about that. The um, sun is changing, and that means that the spring is coming because my room is really, really nice and warm this time of day. And it's uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and um, I'm on this art journal page with you today. Do a over and hope um, um, it'll turn out good. I have a piece of inspiration on my desk. I cannot tell you where I got it from. It was something that I really, really liked, and I didn't even write down the person's name. So I apologize if you are out there and you see this. Um, piece of inspiration which I'm going to show at the end after I do mine um, and it's yours please let me know because I wanted to tell you how so much I thought it was absolutely amazing and um, I believe it was a card front and um, I'm actually going to do this art journal page and um, use that card front as inspiration make it in a much larger size obviously and then I do want to try some of the card fronts if I can figure out how she did the um, process so here's a uh, groom bucker in and out art journal and they call it an in and out book uh, by groom bucker because you can pull the pages out and work on them and I'm sure you've seen this before if you follow me at all, um, I'm just going to give you a quick little flip through here and see if we have an empty page. Um, here is one, and I'm going to pull this one out. This will be the one that we work on. Just carefully pulling that out. It's really, really heavy-duty paper, and um, it looks like I've got two more papers in the back here. And then we'll flip the book over and we'll work on the back sides. So um, excited to work on an art journal page today. So this is what we're going to work on. And like I said, uh, I have a piece of inspiration that I'm looking at over to the side here. And I'm just going to rock and roll here and see if I can figure out how this was done so i'm thinking my first step is to make a round circle here get my pencil and i want it to be on the side like this so i'm making a mask Oop, it went a little off and that's not a problem Okay, so I just used my color wheel to do that half circle there. I'm going to cut this out. And I think what I should do before I even put any paint or anything down is I think I should prep my surface because there's going to be a lot of stamping and I think probably some inks and things like that. So I'm working on my silicone mat, something that I really, really like. And um, I have a new product in my craft room, and this is called Paper Texture Paste. And I don't think that this person used this paper texture paste on her um piece of art but I want to try it out and I want to see what it's like so we're gonna do that 
Um, that's what your art journals are for, you know, they're, they're for experimenting, trying new things out. I'm gonna grab just a piece of this here because I'm gonna go off the edge, I'm sure. And I'm just gonna create, uh, look at this, this is interesting product. And what does it say here? Opaque paste with matte finish similar to handcrafted paper. Hard and permanent when dry. Perfect for creating natural looking textures and adding dimension. Great for journal pages, collage, home decor, and more. And then I wondered what the first ingredient was on here. And... It doesn't have the ingredients, but it's by Finnebar and Art Extravaganza, Extravagance, Paper Texture Paste. So, let's try it, huh? Put some yummy texture in the back, and you know by looking at this right here, this is going to take some time to dry. So, I am going to do that and get it drying. And we'll come back to it. And I am going to... There's big hunks of paper in here. Interesting. I am going to start packing because I'm going down to my cottage this weekend for another crafting weekend. So what I do is when um, I don't have a booking on the weekend, I let my couple of girlfriends know and they are a yay or nay if they want to come down. And um, we take turns with the food and um, we just stay up late and create and work on things and laugh a lot and have a good time. And we stay over. We go on either Friday night or my friend Kathy comes down on Saturday. It just depends on what people got going on. So I'm going to let this dry. Uh, start packing. So look at that. Pretty cool already, huh? And we haven't even done anything. Alright, so I'll be back. We're going to let that dry and we're going to see what happens. Okay? Be right back. There is a lot of texture on here. Okay, so here's my idea. I'm just using um, some parchment paper and I made kind of a uh, mask there so I wanted this round circle to be separate than the other part I'm using my black archival ink and a stamp that has like a screen door texture to it you'll be able to see the background texture in the pictures at the end so I'm just going around inside that circle and um, adding a little bit of stamping. I'm going to wipe off my stamp, put my archival ink away, and on to the next. So we're taking that mask away, and we're going to cover the circle that we had just made. And we're going to use my favorite uh, French text stamp. And I will link it below if I can find something close. And using my archival ink again, and I'm just using that um, stamp to add, excuse me, some um, interest to the background on the side that is not the circle. I'm going to wipe my stamp and put that away. And next part, let's see what we've got. Okay, keep that um, circle mask there and I'm going to use some green paint and like I said this is from a this inspiration is from a 
picture I found on the internet and if anyone recognizes the picture I would so much like to know where you saw it or a name of the person that the picture came from because unfortunately I've had it for um, several weeks on my desk and I did not save that information but when I kept looking at it I really really wanted to make this um, hers was a card so obviously mine is an art journal page um, I'm going to see if I can figure out the technique by doing it in my art journal and then if I think I got it I will maybe make some of these into cards this weekend I have all the supplies of course because there is no shortage of supplies when you uh, travel to a craft weekend you take much much more than um, you need for sure and then of course you're using the other people's um, items too so that's what's really fun about it okay that looks good I've got that circle there and I just used that with my makeup sponge and put that um, ink on or I'm sorry paint on that's acrylic paint and that color was by Stamparia and it is a grass green I'm going to give that a little dry so I don't smudge it and we'll go on to the next part now the focal point here is a large flower and I believe this person that made this card used a stamp and I want to say this is a penny black stamp but I do not know like I said I don't have the information and that makes me so very sad um, so here's my interpretation of it I'm using some gold paint this color is a um, Delta ceramic coat paint in antique gold I use it all the time I like that color a lot and also I have some deco art acrylic paint and it is Santa red so that is the colors that I chose for my piece I am just kind of double loading my brush half of the brush is with green and half of the brush is with the gold and I'm just kind of trying to figure out how to make some real loose uh, painterly uh, marks on here and I'm trying to create the um, leaves for the flower I know that it looks like junk right now but I really like how it turned out so stick with me I'm rinsing my brush in my water and now I'm going to try and do the flower part um, I'm filming this kind of late at night so I have some strange shadows there I apologize about that I'm using that Santa red and I'm trying to just um, not think about it too much I'm just looking at the example and putting down some red and this is going to turn into a flower I hope right now I'm kind of like oh I don't like this at all I don't know what I'm doing but let's keep going and see what happens um, just adding a little bit of that gold to the red and um, like I said let's just see what happens I'm I'm not going to throw it in the garbage yet I added a little bit of red down on the leaf down at the bottom and now I'm using something that I've really been excited about lately and of course my cap is stuck it is airbrush medium in black acrylic paint in a small squeeze bottle here I'm taking that needle out of the fine tip there and giving it a shake and I'm just going to create some stems and I'm just going to go around the red and gold paint and try and make it look like a flower and I, I have to say I do think it does look like a flower um, when I'm all finished with it and I do go around the leaves there 
to make those look like leaves. And I'm using that black in a real scribbly, um, scribbly, uh, not even thinking, um, kind of just a, what do you call it? Um, just a real scribbly technique there. I'm not sure what I'm doing, but I'm just trying to make that look like a flower and I can see it. Let me know in the comments below if you think it looks like a flower or if I really just uh, made this piece terrible. Um, my, um, our, my airbrush medium in black acrylic paint is kind of getting clogged so I'm having a little difficulty there. I know that it's almost empty. I'm just using that needle to poke through the fine tip applicator and trying to get that to flow again just so I can finish this piece and then I will go ahead and um, clean that better and fill it with the airbrush medium. Here's how it turned out. It's super wet right now so I'm going to work on the other side and my thought was some uh, modeling paste and some water because the modeling paste is really really thick and I'm just watering it down a little bit here and I'm going to use some bubble wrap and add even more texture to the background um, outside of that circle where the flower is just mixing it up with my palette knife and I'm really missing my heavy gesso which I used a lot, a lot before, and I used it all up. And I thought I could get by by just mixing this modeling paste with water to get the same effect. Well, unfortunately, it is not the same effect. So I'm going to have to purchase some more of that heavy gesso. Now, I kind of smushed that bubble wrap onto the piece and I didn't like it at all. It, it just kind of made kind of a mess. So I'm going to try it again and I'm going to try with some larger um, bubbles on the bubble wrap. So here we go. I'm making sure that the bubbles are full of air because that's how you get that technique of that texture. And I'm going to use the modeling paste at 100 percent strength there. I didn't water this down at all. And again, I'm just telling myself that I so miss my heavy uh, gesso. And so I'm already going to put that in my cart or on my list of things that I'd like to purchase in the near future. Giving that bubble wrap a um, stamp down and a little bit down to the bottom there. And I am going to call it good because I'm just trying to get some texture there and I can see it. I know it's hard for you to see on camera because it's very, very white. But when we put the um, acrylic ink over the top, you will be able to see that come to life. So stay with me here and we'll get there. Um, I'm liking it but again I wish I had my heavy gesso instead of my modeling paste. This is going to need a um, lot of dry time here. I added a little bit of green to the stem and also a little bit of green to the inside and outside of that flower circle and I let that dry. Here is my Liquitex um, liquid ink and it is in my favorite, one of my favorite colors, the Burnt Umber. And now I'm trying to keep that ink outside of that circle. I'm looking at my inspiration piece which is over to the um, left where I'm working and I didn't want to show you that yet. I wanted to complete the piece and um, give it my own take and then I'll show you the inspiration piece at the end and you can let me know in the comments below if you think um, I got it or if you like it better the way she did it. Of course she did it in a card 
and um, yeah leave comments below and let me know what you think so spraying that and dabbing it up until I get it the way I like it and um, you know how I always tell you to make sure you put your cover on your liquid ink when it's on your desk well you'll see what happens here of course I go ahead and I spill mine and I will show you what I do to save as much of that ink as I can. Um, I, I was just sick when I spilt it, but thinking fast on your feet, I um, used most of the ink that I had spilled. So you'll see that in the next smooth move here as I spill it. Oh, there it is. Yes, look at, I'm just like, oh my goodness, what do I do? trying to think of how I can save the most of this ink. So I did suck up a lot of the ink with the sponge dauber and put it back in my uh, bottle because I absolutely love that color. And I have spilt it before, so my bottle is less than half full. Here I put down some music sheets and I'm putting down some um, gauze that I had in my stash and I'll explain that a little bit more in the next section. But I'm trying to use that ink and spraying it with water, making it run so that I have some kind of tea dyed papers here and I'm not wasting that ink. I was just sad about spilling it. But when I was thinking quick on my feet, I figured out that I will try and make these collage papers and I know that I will use these in the future because I use a lot of this music sheet and when they're grungy with this color on them they'll be even better so making um, you know collage sheets out of spilt acrylic paint you know lemon lemonade you know scenario and that's how this came about so I thought I would leave that spill into the video for you instead of wiping that all into the garbage or using my um, towel and wiping it up I wanted to save as much of that ink as I could now I'm using that uh, piece of gauze and you could use um, cheesecloth also I believe that I am out of cheesecloth and this gauze was sitting in my texture basket so I thought I would try go ahead and stain as much as I could and I am off to work and I'm going to let this sit to dry and we'll be right back to get back to the art journal piece for you Okay, I'm back. You saw that I had a big spill of my ink. I don't know why, but I do that all the time with just that one color of ink. And that color of ink was the Burnt Umber uh, Transparent Ink by Liquitex. I always spill that one. Obviously, I'm going to have to get another bottle. So I cleaned up my mess and I um, just wiped up my mess with these pieces of um, music sheets because I know I will use these in future projects. No problem there. And then I did dye this piece of um, gauze. Um, I don't know what the difference between cheesecloth and gauze is. This is gauze, and um, I think they're very, very similar. Maybe cheesecloth has squares that are a little closer together. I'm not sure. But um, I use this in a lot of projects. And I'll put this on a piece of white paper so you can see it. 
how cool it is. It makes it, you know, vintage looking. Here is a project I used with it recently. And if you can see in this little coin capsule, I have a butterfly in there. And then I have that gauze or cheesecake, cheesecake, cheesecloth, um, tinted in the background there. And I'll link above, um, this video if you want to see it it's um maybe last week or two weeks ago and uh, i'll link that above so um that's what i will do with this gauze that i wiped up my mess with okay back to our project so we can finish this up here's how it's looking i have some of that sun peeking through on my desk again um i'll try to fix it here um, I just really like that the sun is shining right now into my, um, art studio, and that got rid of that little one there. Um, here you can see I put a little bit of green in that stem there. Everything is dry. I'm liking how it's turning out. I'm just going to add a little bit more uh, brown to this piece and maybe just a little bit of um, a different color of ink and maybe that'll just warm it up just a little bit more. I'm feeling like it's needing some of this quadacridone gold and that would be this color here. Um, nickel azo gold. The other one is quadacridone gold. They're very close. I think I'm going to go with maybe this quadacridone gold, I think. And I have that on my swatch there. Like I said, they're very close. Um, well, let's see how close they are, shall we? We'll use one on one side and a little bit on the other. Now, just a tiny little bit of this. These are... Uh, golden fluid acrylics a tiny little bit is going to go a long way here and I just want to do it a little bit on this edge my paper is kind of curling because there's been a lot of water so just a tiny little bit maybe one drop and then my spray bottle we're going to add a little more water and then of course our brush And we'll do that up at the top here. Kind of like that. Maybe spray my water a little bit so that runs over to the side there. And let's do a drop down here at the bottom and we'll see the difference in color. <coughs> Whoopsies, I don't want to spill it again. Give it a shake. I'm not very good with my paints. I don't clean off the tops like I think we probably should. I'm just going to do one drop again. Yeah, and I think that's the color that I really wanted was that uh, little bit darker brown. So you know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to dab this up as much as I can. And then see how this is pooling here? I really like that. And this is the one that I'm going to use. And then use my brush to make it run. And we're just going to go like that. Don't really want it to go on my flower. So yeah, I like that. I just need it a little darker there. And I am going to dry this. And then I am going to use my um, potting soil. 
and I'm going to go ahead and darken the edges. So yeah, we're almost done here. And then, um, so many of you wanted to see how I clean my spray bottles. While this is drying, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I think I want just one little drop on here. Oh yeah. I don't want to lose my white space though. That's what I'm trying not to do. I'm going to set that aside and let it dry. I'm actually going to have to put it on my floor. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how I clean my spray nozzles. And obviously, I can't take you over to a sink to do this, so you'll have to uh, bear with me a bit. So this is the ones, these uh, spray, spray uh, paints are usually the ones that clog up the most with me. So I take a jar like this and I put um, alcohol in it, uh, rubbing alcohol, uh, maybe about half full. And then carefully I take the top off and set my ink far away so I don't spill it. And then I just disassemble everything. We don't obviously have to clean the, the um, cover, but I throw in the top there and already you can see a whole bunch of paint has come off and then I do pull um, this straw out if it comes out some do and some don't this one does so that the rubbing alcohol can get up into the nozzle there and then I put everything in there I have a cut on my finger and that is stinging and I seal it up good and then I shake it just like it's going to be in a little washing machine and I'm washing all those parts and getting that ink out of there out of all of those parts now sometimes um, if they're really stubborn I will leave them sit overnight um, and then they'll definitely come clean. Now I take this to the sink and I would run uh, hot water on it and get it all clean that way. I'm going to cover this up because I've been having a spilling problem, don't you know? As you have seen. Okay, and then, ouch. Okay, so I, yo, that's stinging my finger so then um, I start going ahead and assemble it back up I can see that this one is cleaned out and this is cleaned out stick that back in there I can see that this tube is cleaned out and this is the big one this nozzle here and I can see with just my eyes that there's a hunk right here. Look at this. That's a whole bunch of paint right there. So you can see just by that little bit, I'm pulling out this chunk of paint and there's just a little more in there and I'm just using my tweezers and it, this is a process you know um, it would be real beneficial to get all your sprays out and check the ones that work and the ones that don't work and then just a uh, have a go at it you know I'm sure that it'll get easier and easier as you work on them but some are more gooped up than others see there's all that that's all paint right there maybe I'll 
zoom in a little bit for you. I apologize that that was a little far away. But yeah, this, this was all paint right here that came out of there. And I can see that there's a little tiny bit more in there. And I'm just carefully pulling it out with my tweezers. Now, I'm going to put that one piece back in there in our washing machine. And dig it out. And see if there's any left in there. I don't see any. Now I have a little tub of water ahead of me here and it's not very clean water. Cover this back up. Now this is good for quite a few times so don't just use it once. And let's see how we did here. I put it on and I can already hear that that is a clean nozzle there. Now, one thing, oof, I just sprayed that in my face, that I know for a fact is that um, if you put your finger on the bottom of the hose and spray, that is going to give the spray a better chance of working. And the reason being is because it has to create kind of a vacuum to pull that ink or that spray or whatever it is through. But you can see that that's working. Now, usually I would, um, let's see, I'll just pour a little bit of water in this tr tray here, just so we can see how it's going. Now you could uh, use your alcohol in this instance too, um, but I don't want to spray alcohol all over my, and there it is, it's working. So, amen, that is not too hard to do, but the big key is to get this big goober of paint out, and I use that tweezers and my alcohol washing machine is what I call it. So I can put that back on my ink. And another preventative uh, measure is to always wipe your nozzle every time you use your spray, even between sprays. So here I am, I'm working on a project. See how nice it's coming out. See, and I may have to go back and use my spray again, but I'm going to wipe that nozzle every single time and keep a cover on it too, another preventative measure. So I hope that helps you um, clean out your sprays. I'm going to clean up this area here and see if our... our um, our journal page is dry, and it is not dry. I'm going to give it a quick dry with my heat tool, and we'll be back, okay? And we'll finish this up. I'm back, and I wanted to show you just um, quickly what I use a lot of times for my... Uh, sentiments on a piece like this. Now these books I absolutely love and I believe I need to get my hands on some new ones. These are pretty old. Uh, Big Chat, Chit Chat, and Small Talk. Um, Hobby Lobby, they're by Tim Holtz, Ideology. Uh, $4.99 and you can see I got them clearanced $1.25. I'm going to have to research these now they've got black and white sheets and these this one here is just words also this one is just words um i do have a lot left in the books um sometimes it's hard to put a phrase together for me maybe you're better at that and you could look at the words and just go ahead and put phrases together um like i said i'm not that wonderful at it 
and this one, small talk, is uh, phrases all put together for you. So I guess I don't have to research and get more. I have plenty to work with here. You know how, you, how it is. You always just feel like you need more and more stuff if you've had things for a long time. I just need to use them. So that's my deal. I am taking them to the cottage this weekend. So hopefully I'll use a bunch this weekend and maybe my girlfriend's Tina and Kathy will use some also, and then it will look like I have more missing. Also, um, these quote chips, um, Tim Holtz again, um, I have maybe two packages of them in this little plastic box. And if they feel a little thick because they're like um, chipboard, just pull them and pull them apart. And then they're a lot thinner. They're more like this version over here. So um, I'll link them below um, both of the possibilities, these ones here and the quote chips. Lucky is a state of mind. That's a very good one. And then my third option is the sticky quotes, um, art by Marlene. And this is Artsy Arabia um, booklet. And it does have black and white also. And these are um, just a little more, um, I don't know, um, hip, I want to say. Um, crying is when your eyes speak and your mouth has no words to explain your emotion. You know, there, there's a lot of thought in these. Dream big. Art heals. Take no shit. <laughs> Be a rainbow in someone's cloud. Um, fearless and free. Happy dance. Fabulous. Focus on the walk, not the talk. So lots of um, quotes in here also. So I will link these together um, in the description below. And I'm going to take them with this weekend, and hopefully I will use some up. Back to this piece. Um, I did come up with a sentiment um, out of my um, Tim Holtz packages there, and it says, Beautiful thoughts make, make magic possible. And I thought that would be neat on here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up on this. I need to add some white splatters, some brown edge, and I want to use my archival on here because I do have quite a bit of water on here, and I just want to go ahead and go around the edges, and I'm using a big sponge, sponge dauber to do that. I'm also going to add some black to this too, so um, not to worry here. I have my um, craft mat back here and it's clean. Now see what's happening. My paper here is so wet that it is tearing a little bit at the top there. So I am holding it a little more careful and I'm going to go ahead on here. Now this sponge dauber here is falling apart as I'm using it, which is perfectly fine because it is quite an old one. Um, and they do disintegrate after you use them a lot. And I do use this a lot because I do put a lot of um, ink on my edges. And that's just something that I like to do. You don't have to, of course. This is your art journal page. I just like that brown edge. And then you know that I like to do that black edge too. And I am going to do both. And you can see how my dauber is falling apart here. But I'm just going to quickly go around here. I'm going to add my white splatters and I think I will add my black edge first because um, those white splatters take so long to dry 
and I need to be done with this piece. I have some other things to do, finish my packing for the weekend. I'm not leaving until Friday, but it's already Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon. All right, so let's go ahead and do that black edge. I'm just going to use this piece of paper here that we used as our stencil. And um, my black edge today, I'm going to keep using my uh, black gelatos double scoop. I'm trying to use this baby up, and it is just relentless. There is a lot of product in here. Now, when I'm rubbing my finger over this, I can really feel the texture of that background. And that is just absolutely yummy to me. That um, paste that we used in the beginning, Paper Texture Paste by Finnabar, is really got some great, great texture. So I'm going to be careful. And I just heard that my headset is going to die, so... I'm going to be careful and not cut my finger on that texture there because you never know. It, it's pretty textured. Oops, and I'm pulling those things off. We don't want to do that. I'm trying to hurry now, and you know what happens when you hurry. Nothing good, usually. There was a lot of water on this piece. So some of my things are falling off, and that's all right. We've got plenty more here to put it back in our Grumbacher in and out notebook. One more edge here. All right. Get rid of that. And we're going to add uh, white splatters. And this is nothing new to you. You have seen me do it many, many times. I'm just going to cover my surface because I have washed this mat a lot this week. And it's not hard to wash. It just takes time. I'm using my Dark, Doc Martens, uh, P, Doc PH Martens Bleed Proof White. And this stuff is amazing for those splatters. I've got a thin brush here. I'm just going to use the back end, put a little bit on my craft mat, use some clean water because my water on my desk is very, very dirty. I'm going to make that into a more liquid state and we're going to put splatters on here and um, I will have pictures at the end but when I put these splatters on I want to show you the piece that I found on the internet and I am so sorry that I don't have the person's name that created this piece um, if anyone can help me out I would so appreciate it because I want to give that artist the recognition that is due of course I changed it a little bit and made it my own but you will see that um, it does look a lot like the um, piece that I found. I've been putting a piece of saran wrap over this um, because it seemed like it was trying to dry out on me. So that's how I did that. I'm going to wipe this up. Here's the piece. Like it? I like it. Okay, now let me show you uh, the inspiration. Oops, I forgot to put my sentiment on. I'll do that first. So I'm just going to set these down carefully. I'm not going to press them down completely. And 
I should have done this before the splatters, of course. And uh, look at the end, you'll see how I've got these pushed down and then I'll go around them with my black marker. But it says, beautiful thoughts make magic possible. So um, I like that. Now here's the inspiration. Now does anyone know where this came from? Because I cannot find it. How do you think I did? I think it's pretty darn cool, huh? All right, so be sure to stay tuned to the uh, pictures at the end. Then it'll show you the um, sentiment finished. And I appreciate you stopping by. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. And we will talk to you again on Thursday for another mixed media project. I hope you liked it, and I appreciate you watching. And thank you so very much. Bye now.